Calling all detectives. The opening night of a play was a triumph for everybody, including a murderer. That is the situation on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. A private detective like me, Jerry Browning, is always on the lookout for someone who's trying to stage a crime. The first night audience milling in the lobby of the Barton Theater was unanimous in its approval. Well, Monica Morton has finally found the perfect role. Believe me, Girl of the Hour is a hit. I liked what I heard. Girl of the Hour had been written by an old school friend of mine, Jack Seymour. I found him talking with the show's producer-director, Hank Elvidge. I went up to them, added my best wishes. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, kid, this is it. The play's a wow, a smash Elvidge beamed at Jack and me. Oh, that Monica. She's magnificent. Only hope she can sustain the pace. Think I'll go backstage, give her a kiss for luck. As Elbridge left us, Jock frowned. Pretty soon, Jerry. Nobody will kiss Monica but me. We've uh, got sort of an understanding. I get it. Advanced congratulations, Jack. Thanks. Uh, I think I'd better duck backstage myself. Just got time before the second curtain. He had a lot of time. Almost ten minutes elapsed before the curtain went up again. In this act, Monica had added an enormous corsage of gardenias to the right shoulder of her costume. And I figured whoever sent her those flowers sure bought with a lavish hand. Then, about halfway through the act, in the middle of a big speech, Monica faltered. She groped for a chair, swayed into it, and collapsed. They rang down the curtain and Hank Elvidge stepped out. Is there a doctor in the house? A little man with a black bag hurried forward. I sat tight. That is, until Jock elbowed his way through to me. Jerry, I need you. I think Monica is dead. After the star of a hit play collapsed on stage, the man she was secretly engaged to told me that he feared she was dead. Backstage, the little doctor took his hypodermic syringe apart. The ambulance will be here any minute, Dr. Clayton. Clayton sighed, tucked the instrument into his bag. Too late for an ambulance, I'm afraid. I hoped that injection would help, but Miss Morton is dead. He closed his bag. Jock stood beside me, the picture of utter despair. Elbridge was taking it hard, too, but he was turning in a good cover-up performance. Well, nothing to do now but give the customers their money back. I'd better get out to the box office. Dr. Clayton put a fatherly hand on Jock's shoulder. I understand everything, my boy. The lady whispered your name before she passed on. Ah, youth. The tragic beauty of love. You're a nice guy, Doc. But uh, maybe we'd better get practical. What about the death certificate, for instance? Clayton looked startled. Oh, dear, I hadn't thought about that. I'm from out of state, just in town on a little visit. Perhaps the law... I'm sure everything will be okay, as long as a qualified physician was in attendance when Miss Morton died. You are an accredited doctor. I certainly am, chief of staff of the hospital at downtown Iowa. I was about to apologize, but I caught a glimpse of something worth studying. I bent down, and when I lifted my head again... Hey, look at these flowers, Dr. Clayton. Dr. Clayton's gone, Jerry. He left to take care of the uh, arrangements. What about the flowers, Jerry? They're the wrong color. When gardenias fade normally, they turn brown. These are blue. That isn't all. Smell them. They've been dosed with some powerful anesthetic. Get the police. Monica Morton was murdered. The cops came, and while the medical examiner was working over the dead girl, I talked with Pop Cross at the stage doorman. Sure, I brought them flowers to Miss Monica. I mean, I found them right outside the door. Oh, nothing funny about that. Some of these stage door Johnnies are too shy to bring them in in person. They just write the lady's name on the box. Well, I give these to Miss Monica after the first act, right while she was having a big battle with Mr. Elvidge. That's why the curtain was so long going up. The box, Pop. What florist did they come from? Weren't no florist name, just Miss Monica's printed on it. And after she took the poses, I threw the box into the furnace. I called every florist that stayed open evenings, but none of them reported a king-sized order of gardenias. I went back to the cops. They were holding Hank Eldridge, and the medical examiner was sounding off. The autopsy will prove what I already suspect. This woman inhaled a lethal dose of chlorotrimethane. How did you work it, Eldridge? But I tell you, I didn't do it. 
I wouldn't hurt Monica for the world. I loved her. That's it. He loved her, officer. And tonight when Monica told him we were going to be married, he must have gone crazy. Jock, I didn't kill Monica. Please believe me. I turned to Jock. Look, you wouldn't want anything to happen to Hank if there was the slightest doubt of his guilt, would you? Of course not. What do we do about it? There's only one thing to do. Get Dr. Clayton back here. Remember he said Monica whispered your name before she died? Maybe she said something else that'll lead us to the real killer. What's his address? I don't know. But he ought to be easy to find. Oh, yeah? First, we check funeral parlors. No, sir. No Dr. Clayton has sought our services for any patient. I called every hotel in town. Sorry. No Dr. Clayton is registered here. I checked the box office. I don't think I had a reservation under that name. Anyhow, with all this money back commotion, I'm lucky to know my own name. I put in a long-distance call to the Elmton Hospital in Iowa. I got my answer. Dr. Clayton had been chief of staff, but he'd retired only last week. Was at home, an invalid himself. That was enough for me. The police put a watch on every airport and train depot, and we got the phony Clayton as he was about to board the Coast Limited. And he talked. Oh, how he talked. My act just wasn't good enough, I guess. Sure, I'm an actor. Monica was my wife. For as long as she could further her career with the money I'd inherited from my uncle. When she broke me, she divorced me. Kept producers from giving me jobs. I planned to kill her for a long time. I got a list of doctors. Picked a name in a little town just in case I was questioned. Then I got a medical kit, and the rest was easy. Bought the whole stock of gardenias from a street vendor, made one corsage of it. I knew Monica couldn't resist wearing anything as splashy as that wreath of gardenias. Their heavy scent had covered the chloral odor. I knew that when she'd pass out, they'd give out with that is-there-a-doctor routine. That's when I killed her. That hypo was the same drug. Yeah, I had it all figured, and I knew my disguise was okay. So, Browning, how did you know my act was a phony? I didn't know. But two things made me wonder. You spotted sentimental stuff about young love, which isn't exactly part of a doc's equipment. And that made me think about your black bag. That's equipment a doctor usually doesn't take with him to the theater. Well, the would-be physician went into jail and Elvidge came out. The last thing I heard was that he and Jock have got together again and are collaborating on a new play with an all-male cast. Like I said, the staged crime is the easiest to detect. Because sooner or later, the actor's cue turns into a clue. And then it's curtains for a real-life villain.